Um, we just got this probable cause affidavit that was unsealed that has all the details about the police investigation. We've been learning a lot of these details here in the last hour or so. This hearing, this initial appearance of Brian Koberger in a Latak County courtroom just wrapping up minutes ago. We have an opportunity now to play this entire hearing for you. This is not a plea hearing. This is an initial appearance, the first appearance in an Idaho courtroom from Koberger, the 28-year-old, as Mimi mentioned, charged in this case. So we were not able Gail to live Emmer, stream this court Zana hearing, Kernodal. but here it is in its entirety. By stabbing Zana Kernodal, from which she died, in violation of Idaho Code 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. Again, the maximum penalty for that offense, if you plead guilty or are found guilty, is up to death and or imprisonment for life. Do you understand? Yes. Count five alleges that you committed the felony offense of murder in the first degree. It alleges that the defendant, Brian C. Koberger, on or about November 13th of 2022, in Lake Talk County, state of Idaho, did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice aforethought, kill and murder Ethan Chapin, a human being, by stabbing Ethan Chapin, from which he died, in violation of Idaho Code's 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. And again, the maximum penalty for this offense, if you plead guilty or are found guilty, is up to death and imprisonment for life. Do you understand? Yes. And Mr. Koberger, would you like to represent yourself, hire a lawyer, or see if you qualify for court-appointed counsel? I have court-appointed counsel. Court has reviewed your application for uh, attorney at public expense. I do find that you are indigent and do qualify for court appointed counsel. I will appoint Ms. Taylor uh, to represent you in this case. Ms. Taylor, have you had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Koberger about uh, speedy preliminary hearing and setting this matter? Your Honor, I have. Um, we would ask the court to set the status hearing in a week or two to make the final determination. Okay. And Mr. Thompson, Ms. Jennings, are you in agreement with that? That's fine with the state, Your Honor. go ahead and set this matter for a status hearing then on the calendar um, on January 12th at 10 o'clock a.m. We will make sure notice is sent. And then, uh, Ms. Taylor, do you wish to uh, argue bail at this time? Your Honor, I would like to ask the court to consider setting a bond. Um, Mr. Koberger right now is on a no bond hold. But it's a limited request as I don't have enough information. We are new to the case. We haven't reviewed very much in the way of information about the case. And we have just begun our own work on the case. But we would want the court to know that Mr. Koberger has a good family that stands behind him. And Mr. Thompson. You know, the state's position is that Mr. Koberger is not qualified, is not entitled to bond in this case. We can take certain charges uh, as is noted on the arrest warrant itself. Idaho Code 19 816, 19 2903, both specify that given the potential penalties in this case, there's no right to bail. Um, the defendant was arrested 3,000 miles away across the country, uh, where his family is. We can ask that he remain in custody. No bail. At this point in time, pursuant to Idaho Criminal 46B and Idaho Code 18, excuse me, 19 816 and 2903. I am going to leave uh, the bail set at this case as no bail at this point in time um, until I have additional or further information um, at a later date in time. 
So uh, with that, then Mr. Coburger, you will be remanded in custody and remain in custody on the no bail pending further proceedings in this matter. Okay, uh, a quick ending to the hearing there. A couple of the highlights to take away. No bail set mm -hmm. for uh, the defendant in this case in a no contact order there, also ordered by the judge, uh, Magistrate Judge Megan Marshall. Uh, a new hearing date now set for January 12th, which of course we'll, we'll be watching. Uh, at least one or more family members of these students uh, were in the front row of the court hearing today. You could not see them there. Um, sobbing, of course, as the names were read in court, but really the demeanor of Koberger seemed very calm, uh, nodding as the judge talked, spoke with him uh, and uh, talked about the case before him uh, and really emotionless, frankly. Obviously, the victim's families who were in the courtroom were feeling a lot of emotion as they came face to face with the man accused of murdering these four students, Ethan Chapin from Skagit County, Kayleen Gonzalez, Madison Mogan, and Zana Kernodal. Uh, Sebastian Robertson uh, just spoke with the attorney for the Gonzalez family. We'll have that in just a moment. But meantime, we're getting some new chilling yeah. details about the murders, as well as how investigators linked Koberger to the murders. Here's kind of a recap of some of the things that we've been reading in this affidavit. The murders happened on November 13th in the early morning hour, sometime between 4 and 4.20. We learned that one of these surviving roommates mm -hmm. actually saw a masked man walk by them mm -hmm. on his way out. Yeah. They also uh, report that there was a white uh, car, a white Hyundai Elantra that was seen speeding away from the scene. There was a leather a knife sheath. This is key to the investigation that was apparently left at the scene. Investigators found DNA on this knife sheath. They then found DNA linked to Koberger in Pennsylvania when investigators went through the garbage at his parents' right. home in Pennsylvania. And that is how they linked him to the crime scene. Another interesting point, Mimi, that I, I took from this as well, and I know you did, uh, the cell phone data that was collected in this case is really astonishing. Very well laid out here in the affidavit. Police had been tracking his cell phone after he had uh, uh, reportedly left the state, but also he had uh, cell phone pings to nearby towers, which means he had gone to the home of the murders 12 times prior to the murders, and it's presumably casing the area before the crimes 12 times, um, almost all of them within the hours of those morning hours that the murders had actually happened, which I thought was um, pretty astonishing as well. This is a, a case that they have uh, buttoned up tight, it appears to be, and um, we're, I'm interested to see what the court-appointed attorney might say in the next hearing as well. In yeah, at this point, we through these documents, we have not been able to uh, find out what the connection is yep. that Koberger had to the victims themselves. Uh, we have the rest of this court hearing now. Let's go ahead and listen in. So um, I will go ahead and issue those no contact orders. So I do have a no contact order then for um, the named uh, individual of Dylan Mortensen, Bethany Funk, um, as well as the family members and uh, Mr. Chapin, um, the family members of Ms. Pernodal, the fan, uh, excuse me, yes, Mr. and Ms. Laramie, Mr. Mogan, Ms. Cheeley, and then a number of members of the Gonzalez family. Um, those specific names uh, will certainly be provided to you, Mr. Uh, Koberger, by way of being provided notice of these um, documents. You'll get a copy of these no contact orders. What you do need to be advised of and what will be in this no contact order is you are prohibited from having any contact with them whatsoever. You cannot contact them through a third person in, a writing, in writing or by any electronic means. You cannot Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, use the phone to communicate with them or otherwise um, any form of communication in, in direct or indirectly with them. Um, you cannot engage um, in any conduct that would harass, stalk, threaten, use, attempt to use, or threaten to use any physical force or violence upon them or place them in reasonable fear of bodily injury. 
cannot go within or knowingly remain within 300 feet of their person or their home, workplace, or um, any other uh, place where they might be. There are no exceptions to these orders. Uh, and if you do violate these orders, it is a new misdemeanor offense. It is punishable by up to a year in jail and or a $1,000 fine or both. At this point in time, um, due to being in the magistrate's division here, um, at this juncture, I am going to issue uh, the no contact orders for a period of two years. Um, and then if it needs to be modified or changed by additional judge, um, it can be done so at that time. Is there anything further, uh, Mr. Thompson? Oh, yeah. Anything further, Ms. Taylor? No, you're right. Thank you. We are adjourned. And that's the end of the hearing. It was pretty brief, Jake. Yeah, uh, it didn't very last brief. very long. Uh, he got up and left the courtroom. And uh, it was, it's a very small courtroom. And again, the judge at this point is not was not allowing any live tweeting, mm -hmm. any live streaming. No cell phones. No cell phones, electronic devices in the courtroom. Uh, you could take notes, but that's why we weren't able to give you that, uh, this information until now, um, yeah. now that the court hearing is over. You know, another p big part of this case, which we're now learning as we review these uh, affidavit of probable cause, is the linking of Koberger to this white Hyundai Elantra. Um, the, it, there were two previous traffic stops before the murders that police were able to look back on and say, well, you've got Koberger, we know that he drives a white Hyundai Elantra. There were two traffic stops after the murders in Indiana within minutes apart. They linked him to the Elantra in that case, and then they linked the Elantra to the home in Pennsylvania when they were able to then get the DNA from the trash. So these investigators, as you piece this together step by step, really some incredible uh, crime work. There was so much surveillance video yep. and footage that investigators used to piece together this timeline where they saw the vehicle on multiple uh, surveillance video cameras leave the scene. Mm -hmm. That same vehicle then appeared on uh, different cameras in Pullman and Several on the cameras. Wazoo campus. And then um, it turns out that on uh, December 15th, uh, Brian Kober make a cross-country trip with his dad from Washington to Pennsylvania where his parents live and that's where he was stopped in Indiana twice in a matter of nine minutes by right. first a sheriff's deputy and then an Indiana state trooper. Both of those stops were actually caught on body camera footage which was just revealed recently. The interactions during that uh, traffic stop, very interesting, but at the time both the sheriff's office and Indiana State Police say they had no idea, no information at the time on the suspect in this Idaho uh, case or any information about the car. So they let him go, no citation issued, just a warning in both cases. Interesting. As uh, we went through the holiday season wondering if there were ever going to be any new details, police were hot on the trail of Brian Koberger. Outside of the courtroom, uh, we want to get to a moment uh, just gathered by our news crews there. The family, an attorney for the family of Kaylee Gonzalez, uh, just made a statement about what we witnessed in court. Let's listen. Uh, we're not going to be taking any questions at all. Um, it's obviously an emotional time for the family, seeing the defendant for the first time. Um, this is the beginning of the criminal justice system, and the family will, will be here for the long haul. And that's the statement for the media today. Thank you. An emotional okay. time for those families who, again, came face to face with the man accused of killing their loved one. And this is just the beginning of this uh, case and uh, as the justice, as it moves through the justice system. And again, he's expected to appear in court one week from today at 10 o'clock in the morning. Details of the arrest have since been uh, not, re they've been released and we are waiting to see what happens next. So we will stay on that on King 5. You can always text the word Idaho to the number uh, on your screen here at King 5 206 448 4545. We'll make sure to send you a link to our latest coverage. And we will have the latest coming up on King 5 News at noon. We'll see you then.